In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can connect ChatGPT with SharePoint. This means you can pass data from SharePoint using Power Automate to ChatGPT and have it pass information back. We can have data going in both directions. And this allows all kinds of interesting possibilities. So once you're able to make this connection, it's going to open up a lot of options for things that you can do automatically with your data using the power of AI. So now let's get SharePoint smart. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is go over to the OpenAI site, specifically to a URL which is platform.openai.com. And this is going to allow you to um, get your profile set up in that site. There's a few steps we got to do so we can get our uh, API codes, make sure that we have some credits load it into our profile and have every the piece of information we need in order to do our workflow. So we're going to begin there. Uh, when you go in there, you can make sure your profile is created. You'll have your organization name. And the first thing we need to do is get your organization ID. Uh, there's three different code snippets we're going to need to get from the OpenAI site in order to do the workflow, which I'm going to demonstrate after this. Okay. Next thing, go ahead and create a project. You can call it what you want. You can do that by clicking under your default project next to your organization name and then click create project as shown. And you may name it what you want. In this example, I'm showing calling it SharePoint project. And uh, they do recommend that you uh, break up and have multiple different projects for control and tracking purposes. Once you've created your project on the left navigation, click on general and it'll show your project name. You want to copy the project ID. Okay. So make sure you've got that handy copy and paste it into a text document and have that handy for our next steps. After that, you should go ahead and click on your, uh, picture in the upper right, the little bubble that's your, where your profile information is click on your profile. You need to go ahead and add a key. Uh, initially, it won't have one. You can create that. And of course, I've blanked that all out here, but you'll see a string of characters, which will be your secret key. Make sure you keep that secured. Um, and for now, go ahead and put it over into your text document and have it ready to go for our next steps. Once that's set, go back under organization, click on project. Um, excuse me, click on project, then click on limits, which is under project. And you need to make sure you have the models, the uh, AI models that you want to use enabled. This will allow access when you make your API call in our workflow. You're going to need to put a credit onto your account for OpenAI. So naturally, you're going to need to add a credit card under the payment methods then you're going to um, go ahead and add a credit balance to it. In my case, I added $20 and I've used a nickel. Um, and then you can do things like manage your preferences and usage limits. So uh, I won't go into the intricacies of those screens, but generally speaking, it's pretty intuitive. You can set limits on how much you'll use per month, uh, set your initial balance, so on and so forth. You will also need to have a Power Automate premium license. If your uh, user account in Microsoft 365 and SharePoint does not have Power Automate premium, you're going to need to add that. That is the cost of $15 for your user account per month. Note that you just need it only for your user account. It will be necessary for the account um, that the workflow is going to be executed upon. Here's a screenshot of what we're going to get into in a moment, which is the workflow itself. This is the heart of the workflow. This is the HTTP call from Power Automate, and this is a premium connector. That's why you have to have a premium account for Power Automate. This makes the call to the OpenAI, OpenAI URL, 
and you will pass parameters to that. Um, it's just the same way you would do that as a user using the chat GPT interface. In this uh, case, we're doing it through an API call and you'll use the, um, the information as you see on the screen. These output references, you're gonna see how that works in a second. Essentially, those are variables that are get, going to get passed in here, but they're set up before you make the call. At the tail end of the workflow, you're gonna need another code snippet, and I'm gonna provide links and references to these code snippets under the video. And this is going to parse out the returned information coming back from ChatGPT. So when it makes its response, it provides a lot of information, most of which we don't care about. We're really just interested in the text returned back from ChatGPT after we've given it the prompt. All right, so here I am in Power Automate. This is my workflow. This workflow is set up really as a training example to learn how to make that connection. Once you know how to do this, you can adapt and use this in workflows in all kinds of different ways. In my case, what I did is set up uh, what's known as for a selected item trigger. This is a special SharePoint trigger, which means that I can select an item in SharePoint and it will show me in the automate menu uh, my workflow. I called my workflow translate description. Let's go ahead and start by running this just to see what happens. So if I click on this workflow I created, I am going to be asked for a language. This is an input parameter that I put into my workflow. I've put a quote in here in my description column and made another multi-line text field called translation. That's gonna hold the translated value coming back from ChatGPT. Okay, so I want this to be in Spanish, so I'm going to uh, just enter that and click Run Flow. That will call my workflow. It's going to pass this description along with all my other parameters. And after maybe 10 to 15 seconds, the workflow will have run. And if I keep updating my SharePoint interface, we're gonna see a value come back to my record, which is gonna get updated and it'll go into our translation box. So this quotes a personal favorite of mine that talks about the impact of attitude. Um, so here it is back in Spanish. I'm not gonna try to read this out to you. I know some Spanish, but my pronunciation isn't fantastic. But as you can tell, it translated this entire quote into Spanish for us pretty quickly. All right, let's go back to the workflow and let's see what's going on. Again, I just use this as a practice example. So when you go and make an automated workflow in Power Automate, there is a special trigger called for a selected item if you want to follow what I'm doing. I just needed one input parameter, which is language. And I just said, you know, please enter a translation language. And then I need to get the SharePoint item uh, that triggered this. So very simple, I just reference the same list and pass the ID from the trigger. I'm gonna need that for later when I do an update item. Now, if you remember, I mentioned you have to get three special code snippets that are coming from uh, your OpenAI configuration. That is the user secret key, your organization ID, and the project ID. So. Uh, if you miss those for any reason or don't yet have them, go back to the earlier part of the video. Make sure you've done those steps and have those three key pieces of data handy, and you can drop those into those Compose blocks. I'm not going to expand those because those are personal and private, um, but that's how you will set that up. You're going to need a prompt that's um, pretty intuitive. If you look at what I put in there, it's telling the AI what I want it to do. It says reply back with the translation only of the following text translated into, and then the language, which was my input parameter I created. And then uh, I gave it the description coming from my SharePoint record. Um, so pretty straightforward and easy to understand. Um, this call, this API call is gonna wanna know which AI model to use. OpenAI provides many, 
there's different pricing depending on which of those you use. Uh, each call is always going to be less than a penny, but some are uh, less expensive than others. You can review their pricing if you're um, curious about that. In my case, I'm using what is, as of this video, one of the newer models available, which is GPT-40. Um, That's not the number zero. It's actually the letter O. Um, and then now we're to the heart of this workflow. This is the HTTP request, and this is a premium connector, meaning you have to have a Power Automate premium account in order to use this. Otherwise, you're not going to have the ability to make that HTTP request. It's a post request. There's the URL. And um, where it says outputs, those are all different parameters. So there's the user secret key. There's the organization ID, so on and so forth. We just pass that in, as you can see in the workflow, and then it will go ahead and make the call. And the last part is once it replies back with that, it's going to give us a whole bunch of information. We need to parse that out. We're just interested in the text content of what it's going to return. And that's what this last compose block does. It parses uh, the return content and gets just the text reply back from the prompt. That code snippet was referenced earlier. And again, I'm going to provide links under the video to help you out um, so that you have those uh, key code snippets. Once we've got that ready to go, the last step is the easiest of all. We're just doing a plain vanilla update item request. It's referring back to my SharePoint list. And then I'm just passing back the ID, title, and description that were already in the record. The only information being updated is the translation field. And that's where I'm going to take the outputs in this above block and write it back to that field. And that's the entire workflow right there. Now, these multi-line text fields, I did some special formatting on those. Those are a template available at SharePoint dashboards. Uh, if you've not seen that site, there are many cool things available there to make really nice looking dashboards in your SharePoint lists. So that's available at SharePointDashboards.com. That particular template I used here is the multi-line text template, a lot of possibilities on how you can make that work. Let's go ahead and do another example just to see it in action. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and select my quote and we're going to go to a different language this time. I'm going to go to um, translate my description again, um, but this time I'm going to tell it to do it in a different language. All right, this time let's do it in French. There we go. I'll run the flow and it will kick off and within 10 to 15 seconds um, it will get the translation back from ChatGPT and then um, go ahead and update my SharePoint record uh, with new information for my translation according to what I told it to do. Uh, there it is. Now it is in French, definitely no longer in Spanish. Uh, there is my entire quote translated for me. Okay, so uh, hopefully you found that interesting. Uh, if you're like me, you've been trying to do more and more with AI and trying to learn how to use it in your work and how to learn how to connect it uh, with different tools that you're using. Purpose of this video was to show you how you can make a direct call to OpenAI and specifically use ChatGPT by passing SharePoint data to that and doing that through workflow. There are many possibilities in terms of what you might do. If you're interested in exploring that, there is substantial API documentation open, uh, available at the OpenAI site. And uh, there are many options in terms of what you can pass in terms of data and what it will return um, according to different prompts that you might provide. So I hope you found that interesting. I hope the information in this video will help you do this initial example where you can make that basic call. And from there, you should be able to go on to do all kinds of things with your SharePoint data uh, in terms of connecting with ChatGPT and getting helpful information returned back to you 
to SharePoint and have that happen automatically without any additional steps or user interve intervention. Hope you found that handy and good luck.